I'm Dr. Hannah and I've had type 1 diabetes for 20 years. Today we're going to talk about the Freestyle Libre sensor and where to put it for the most accurate readings. Now Abbott, the manufacturer of Freestyle Libre, recommends only wearing it on the back of your upper arm and they say based on their study that's where they found it to be most accurate but you may have seen and heard about other people wearing this sensor on their forearm or their chest or their lower back or sometimes even their thighs and their calves now these are interesting places and i think it's helpful to understand the pros and cons of trying a non-fda approved or recommended place for these. So I'll share my experience of wearing both the Freestyle Libre 14 day and the Freestyle Libre 3 plus. And I'll also tell you some of the experiences that I've heard of and we've seen for people. So one of the things for the upper arm is understanding where the placement would be most effective. Now, there is something called a compression low, which can change the way that the Freestyle Libre is reading. So if we are compressing the tissue that the Freestyle Libre is sitting in, the blood flow to that area will be decreased because of the compression, and we will see less accurate readings. In fact, sometimes it will even pick up as a low blood sugar reading, even though it's not, just because we're not getting good blood flow to that area. This usually isn't a problem during exercise, but we can see it happen most frequently at nighttime, especially when we're sleeping, let's say we roll over or laying directly on our sensor, that's when it happens. It's happened to me a couple different times, typically when I'm using a placement on my arm and I'm placing it directly on the lateral section of my arm, because if I roll over onto my shoulder, this is where the compression is gonna happen. That's why the recommendation is really for the back of the upper arm. I found, and I learned this from a diabetes educator that's well experienced, is between the deltoid, which is your shoulder muscle, and you can see here is the tricep. So this is gonna be the muscle on the back of your arm. Mine is pretty hard to see in the screen here. So if I find the soft tissue place between both of these muscles, that's a great place to put it. So often mine will be right here. And you can often see that it's not, if I lay and I roll on my shoulder, it's not gonna get squished, if that makes sense. So this is a location. Often you can try and flex in the mirror, this isn't doing a very good job, and try to find, and you can even feel for, that soft tissue place between. Now, I've done this again and again on either arm and had really good luck with it. The other thing that I found helpful is experimenting with other places. Now, this was on my own choice. This isn't something that my personal doctor told me to do, but I've had really good luck with wearing my sensors on my lower back. So if you think about where your pants line would go, just right below that on the soft tissue of my back. Some people experience compression lows in this area at nighttime. I really don't ever get compression lows in that area, so I love to wear it there personally. Again, that's my own choice to not use the FDA approved location. But there are other places that people have experimented it and use all the time, like the thigh and the calf and the forearm and the chest. And what we're seeing is that the thigh and the calf can sometimes report delayed readings, possibly due to lower blood flow in those areas. I don't think that we really know why. That's something to consider. Personally, I've tried my thigh for different sites before, and when I'm getting dressed, that's something that I'm bumping a lot more frequently than my arms for some reason or my lower back. And so I typically don't go for those places for sites just because I found that I'm more likely to have them come off. The forearm and the chest are in interesting locations, and it really may depend on someone's body fat percentage. If we're putting the sensor right over a muscle place where we have less fat tissue underneath the skin, it's going to be maybe less accurate or less reliable because when we're moving and that muscle is flexing, it's gonna impact how that sensor is read. These are really designed to go in fat tissue, not into muscle, and that will change the readings. So I consider usually the forearm and the chest less reliable locations, but I have some people and met people that really like to use those spots. I don't recommend them personally, but again, it's I think an individual choice here. Now remember, with a continuous glucose monitor, on average, you can see about 10 minutes of a delay from a finger prick glucose, meaning that if your blood sugar is 
<clears throat> dropping or it's increasing, where your CGM will pick up the number is about 10 minutes behind where your finger stick will pick up the number. So example, if my blood sugar is 120 and I go on a walk and I'm dropping and I get back from my walk and let's say my CGM says 90 diagonal down arrow, then what I can do is look at my finger prick it may say 80 or so, and that kind of tells me I'm continuing to drop 10 minutes behind where it would be. So if you want the most reliable reading, stick to the back of the arm. I always would recommend finger stick. Typically, you want to do that regardless of the location that you pick. I will link the Freestyle Libre placement sensor guide below so that you can see directly from them what they're recommending. If you have tried any alternative sites and you're open to sharing about them, I'd love to hear more in the comments from your experience. Thanks for watching this video. If you're interested in more on type 1 diabetes and mindset specifically, I've got some new really actionable step based resources for people with type 1 diabetes around mindset, diabetes burnout, getting through a hard chapter with diabetes. And if you're interested in more support in that area, I'd love for you to go to my website and enter your email for our wait list and you'll be one of the first people to find out when that's available. Thanks for sticking to the end. And if you haven't already, please can subscribe. That makes a big difference to me.